All right, so I'm not going to be here Monday for one of the periods, so I want to offer a little help on this 2627 practice sheet. So you can pause it anywhere if I go too fast with the showing the solutions. Number one, we all went through that, that's infinity. Number two should be zero because we have three over a really large number when we plug it in. Number three, we could do the shortcut or we could divide by the highest power of x in the denominator. Either way, we'll get two. <clears throat> Number four, we could divide by the highest power of x in the denominator, which is x squared, or we can just do the shortcut, which uh, you can see is five over negative one. So that'll work, that'll get you negative five. And of course, that's your horizontal asymptote. Number five, you can do that one with the shortcut. You can get five over four because we have the highest power of x, x to the fourth over x to the fourth there. Or you can divide by x to the fourth, everything. Uh-oh, didn't mean to get rid of that. So give me one second. Doing a lot of takes on this thing, so I don't exactly want to do another take. Oops. Where's this thing? All right. Okay, so which one are we on? We're on uh, number six. Okay, so for this one, you want to multiply it out. And if you multiply it out, you'll see that it's nine minus x squared. And so then you can just look at the highest power of x uh, and then the coefficients in front of it. So one over negative one to get your horizontal asymptote or your limit. Number seven, this is the one where I said you could use a calculator or you could try to uh, factor what's under the radical a little bit. So this right here, you can actually factor out an x squared. So if you think of this as square root and then it would be x squared and then that would be the same thing as one plus nine over x squared. That would be the same thing because it would be x squared if you distributed and then plus 9. Well, the advantage of that is then the x squared can actually come out from the radical. It comes out as an x or it could come out as a negative x. So we kind of consider both cases. And then from there, when it comes out as an x, I would say instead of dividing by the highest power of x, it's probably easier just to cancel out the x's and then it'll be 4 over this radical. And then if you let x go to infinity, you can tell that all of this becomes zero. So it's four over one, and so you end up with four. And then the other case is when this is negative x, then the x's will cancel out. So you'll have four over a negative radical, and that radical turns out to be one if you let x go to negative infinity. And so then you end up with negative four. Okay, and we, all, we saw the same thing from the graph. Similar deal on this one, if you want to factor out the x squared from under the radical, you can factor out the x squared and then it leaves you with, you know, 7 minus 8 over, what is that, over x, that'd be the same thing. And then that'll allow the x to come out from the radical and then that leaves you with 7 minus 8 over x under the radical. And so then the x's cancel out, and you could let x go to infinity at this point. I would just let x go to infinity at that point, and then it would be radical 7, which will end up being your horizontal asymptote as well. Number 9, what you want to do there is just multiply it out. So just multiply this out, expand it, we say, sometimes. And if you multiply it out, you'll notice that the x squareds will cancel out if you do it correctly. And then you can factor out an H. And when you factor out an H, that'll take care of the H on the bottom. And you'll have 2X plus H. And then you could let H go to infinity, and then you get 2X. All right. Number 10. This one, same thing. You just multiply it out. If you multiply it out, uh, you can do it the way this person did it. Or you can, maybe you guys remember a pattern from doing this, the sum of cubes, how, how you'd multiply that out, how you expand it, maybe using Pascal's triangle or, or maybe just memorize what it is. But either way, when you do it, you're going to cancel out your x cubes and then everything else is going to have an h. And so you can factor out an h. And then when you do, 
the H's will be able to cancel out and then you will be able to let H go to zero. And if you let H go to zero, then you'll just have two X squared and X squared, and then you'll be able to combine those. All right. All right, I'm looking at number 11, and 11 is, it looks like a derivative, and that symbol there, that's what a derivative is. So F prime, so we haven't officially seen that yet, but it's the same thing as what we did in class. It's called an instantaneous rate of change versus an average rate of change. It's instantaneous. So we look at 4.3 right here, and since we have a left and a right side to work with, we'll just subtract these over these, you know, the difference of those. So that's sort of like the, the difference of the F, F of X's over the difference of the X's, change in Y over change in X, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, we end up with two for the for the right side, and then for the left side we end up with uh, two and two thirds when we subtract 3.4 minus 1.8 over 4.3 minus 3.7. Okay, and then we average those two. We add them together, divide by two, do a little fraction action, end up with two and a third. All right. All right, number 12, uh, whenever you just have one side to work with, you, don't, you aren't able to do both sides. So you've got to, you've got to uh, just use the one side. So right here we're looking at 0.94, which is right on the end. We want to estimate this. Unfortunately, we got nothing here. So our best estimate is just to subtract this over subtracting this, and we'll go with that. That's our best estimate. So we end up on this one getting negative 9.07 when we do that calculation. And then looking at number 13 here, we want to figure out, we want to estimate what the velocity is at 15 seconds. That happens to be right in between 10 and 20. So the best thing we can do is just subtract the, the difference in the position over the difference in the time, and that's our best estimate for what the velocity is basically any time in between 10 and 20 seconds. All right, number 14 is uh, also same thing. We want to estimate the velocity at nine seconds, and so that happens to be right in between six and 12. Doesn't have to be right in between because you know anywhere in there is going to be an estimate. Uh, of the, that same amount. So we're going to do 35 minus 38 and then over 12 minus 6. And so we end up with negative 0.5 units per second. And the last one, number, no, that's not the last one. Number 15, when you're doing acceleration, that's the change in velocity over the change in time. So we want 10 seconds, and again, we, we only have an end point. You know, we only have the end of the, the data here on the left side. So the best we can do is just subtract the, the change in velocity, or subtract the difference in velocity here over the change in time. And we end up with 4.8 over 2. And so we would say a good estimate would be 2.4 units per second squared for an estimate of the acceleration at that particular time. And last one, uh, pretty similar, except this time we actually have both sides to work with. So if you have both sides to work with, then you need to use both sides or else it's not considered the best estimate. So right here, we're gonna be able to subtract these over subtracting these. We'll get an estimate of 2.9, I believe, for that one. And then we'll do the left-hand side, and we'll get an estimate of 4.4, and then we'll average the two, and we'll get 3.65 units per second squared. All right, so about nine and a half minutes. Hopefully that helps for that practice sheet.